Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Hess, owner of the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics, and I'm here with Sarah, our technician, and we are going to talk a little bit about hand feeding your pet bunny um, or your pet rodent or any small mammal, even a ferret or a rat. We see many of these animals here at the center, and we send all of our patients home with some kind of hand feeding formula. Um, these animals are very, very fast metabolism animals, and when they stop eating, we really need to jump in and make sure that they stay hydrated and fed. Um, so we try to teach every owner that comes in with one of these types of animals how to syringe feed at home, um, and we send them home with some kind of uh, powdered syringe for feeding formula. And we frequently have questions as to how to do this. We do our best to try to teach people how to do this ahead of time before an emergency occurs. But I can't tell you how frequently I get called on emergency and I'm asked, oh my gosh, you know, my bunny isn't eating, what do I do? Or my guinea pig, or my ferret, or my rat, or my chinchilla, any of these small mammals. So we thought we'd give you a little demonstration that you can refer to if you're in this situation and you're really not sure what to do. So right now, Sarah is going to show us exactly what we do here at the hospital and what you can do at home um, when you have an emergency situation and your animal isn't eating and you can't get your pet to the hospital right away. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so one of the first complaints I hear from owners is that they don't know how to hold their bunny, guinea pig, chinchilla still for syringe feeding, that they keep running away from them. What I usually tell people is that the bunny burrito or the burrito towel burrito is your best friend. So I usually try to wrap them up real nice from behind and from both sides. And I back them up to my belly like this. I like to have a table that's kind of going to reach my midsection so that I can get to them and lean over them easily and just control what they're doing gently. I put my left hand under their chin. And you're already, right? Because I'm already. Good. <laughs> so, this way I can kind of control their head. Um, bunnies that are a little more active will sometimes use my thumb to kind of stabilize the top of their head just so that they can't move it too far away from the syringe when I put it near their face. And the syringe, and you just want to point out what we have here. We have here the powder version of the syringe feeding formula and then what it should look like after it's mixed with water. You kind of just want a um, porridge type consistency. Um, the problem is that if it's too thick, sometimes it can get stuck in the syringe and it's uncomfortable for the animal to eat. And also if it's too watery, it, it often will fall out of their mouth, it'll dribble, and they won't like it as much because it'll be a little more diluted. And you want to make this fresh each time you feed? Absolutely. Absolutely. You never want to try to refrigerate it. It doesn't keep well after the first use. So what I try to do is just lean over them so I can see the front of their face. And it helps sometimes when you can have a distractor, somebody to just pet and keep your animal distracted as you try to feed. So I'm going to slip the syringe behind his little front teeth here and into his mouth and he'll start chewing. That's normal. And I'll just give a little bit, just one or two lines on the syringe, and then give him a chance to chew and swallow. And there's no metal for rushing, right? You know, the goal is Absolutely. to get it in there slowly if you have to. Absolutely. And, you know, if your pet starts to get very stressed out, very upset, there's nothing wrong with letting them walk around, hop around, get it out of their system, relax a little bit, and then restart. But you do always want to make sure that you still get the full feeding into them because it's very important for them. And how do we know what the full feeding will be? When we give you your prescription, we will send you instructions specifically for your pet tailored by their weight to how much you're going to feed them per day. Um, usually it's three times per day. Mm -hmm. We try to break it up into three times per day. And we'll tell you exactly how many mLs to feed them each time. We will mark it on a syringe for you. And if needed, we will be glad to help you learn how to syringe feed, show you how to do it. And if ever you take you know, them home and you have problems feeding them, you can always bring them back in and we'll be glad to help you out with feeding them. And what if the pet really struggles and doesn't like that particular flavor or taste? We have... We should point out that this animal is not sick and does not <laughs> want to take food because he ate on his own and he's just being used as a, a demonstration animal, but yes. We have several different kinds of syringe feeding formulas. So if your pet doesn't seem to like one flavor or the other, we can try other kinds to see what suits them best. Right. 
And that volume that, that's fed, we will give you a total amount over the day, usually broken up into three feedings. But again, some animals, you know, really don't like to take that much at a time, so you can break it up into six feedings if you need to. And then there's some people that really are not at home um, to be able to give three feedings a day if they work long hours. So you can do it in two feedings, you just have to do it much more slowly. Here in the hospital, we may break it up into many smaller feedings because we're around these animals all day. Um, but this is the type of thing that we would do, as I mentioned before, with a rabbit, um, with ferrets, with a different kind of formula. There are formulas made for herbivores, um, you know, the vegetable eating animals like rabbits and chinchillas and guinea pigs. And, you know, um, and then there are actually formulas made for carnivores, uh, ferrets, and there are even omnivorous formulas for animals that eat a little bit of meat and a little bit of vegetable protein, and those are things like rats. Um, so we will teach all these um, owners to, to do this at home and it can be life-saving. So if you are sent home with this kind of formula from your veterinarian, um, this is just a basic guide. Certainly if you're a patient here, uh, if your animal is a patient here at the center and you come here and you have questions, we'd be happy to take your call. Um, you can look us up again at www.avianexoticsvet.com. It's the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics, and I hope that we've been helpful in guiding you today as to what to do in an emergency if you have a pet like this. Thanks, Sarah. Absolutely. Thank you very much.